last week was really good. It was the kind of corrections episode that I think best represents what we're trying to do here. And when people say to me, where should I start? I want to be able to say episode 82, but I know that I'm going to follow up saying, but there's a lot of stuff in 81 that sets it up. And if you're going to watch 81, you just, you got to watch. And at some point, you like start from the beginning and it, it's a day. You're asking people for a human day. So, uh, you know, look, I'm glad you're here because I don't think we're picking up new people. <laughs> you know what I mean? I think it's us and it's just, it's gonna, it's just gonna slowly degrade over time just as people, you know, age out, rest in peace situation. <laughs> The Prime Minister of Australia's name is pronounced Anthony Albanese. Albanese. Albanese rhymes with easy. I just wish there was a simple way to remember that. <laughs> well, you know, we were talking about him because we were joking that the state dinner, he had a state dinner at the White House, and uh, the White House served beetroot, and we were saying that's uh, insulting, you know, to have a, a you know, world leader over and to give him something is uninteresting is beetroot. And then a bunch of you wrote beetroot is very common in Australian cuisine, so it was appropriate to serve. And hey, I get it. If they ever threw a dinner for me at the White House, I would definitely want them to make stuff I have at home. <laughs> we can do anything you want. We're the White House. Like, oh, you got a pantry? I'd love to quietly eat a handful of almonds in the dark. I hope this doesn't come off as critical of Australian cuisine. I love, I'm going out for Australian tonight. <laughs> Can't get enough of it. When I go on Seamless or, or Grubhub, I just always go to that cuisine tab, see what my local Australian <laughs> has for the night. I have so much respect for Australian chefs because pretty much every creature that lives there, uh, if, you, if you cook it and serve it to a person, that act in any other country in the world is considered attempted murder. <laughs> when an Australian waiter comes to your table, the first thing they say is, before I tell you the specials, is anyone here a cop? <laughs> Uh, I, I did my Australian uh, waiter in my regular voice because the feedback was I have a terrible Australian accent. It was bad last week. It was bad last week because I did not do my vocal warm-ups that I need to do for my Australian accent, and I did not do my vocal warm-ups because I told it's very unsettling to watch me do them. <laughs> like, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. It's like that for 10 minutes. <laughs> oh, I, um, I mentioned in a closer look yesterday that I went to see Paw Patrol 2 this weekend, and I, I intimated that I did not enjoy it. But that is my fault that I didn't enjoy it, because I never saw Paw Patrol 1. <laughs> So I was having a real hard time just following it. <laughs> that movie is very plotty. That's plotty with two Ds. <laughs> I just don't quite understand why these dogs could talk, why they were being funded by the military industrial complex. I don't mind when animals talk in movies. I just don't like when they can talk to people. There have to be rules. Uh, we had a picture of Donald Trump shoplifting an Us Weekly in yesterday's Closer Look as well. And a bunch of you complained because he was putting a Us Weekly, he was stealing a Kit Kat. And a bunch of you said his hands and the graphic were too big. And um, I, so I pulled it up. I don't, I don't know. 
I sometimes feel like you're, you think like I like when you call out graphics and their errors, but I don't know. I think it's fine. <laughs> Oh, uh, we had the leave him alone guy on the show this week. And um, someone said he tapped his phone when it was clearly a slide to answer situation. Uh, we apologize, and next Monday, to make it up to you, we're going to do the whole thing again. Start to finish. Uh, hey, we made a joke about Pepsi. Uh, we had a Pepsi fan who took umbrage and said our joke fell flat, just like Pepsi. <laughs> I feel like I did a good job saying pleading this week instead of pled, but I did let a pled slip in once, and uh, uh, for that, I apologize. We've spent a lot of time already talking about uh, the correct past tense for plea. I don't want to get into it again. Just know that if I make a mistake, we, we will catch it internally. We're trying to correct it. We're trying to get it right. If you hear it again, just, just let it go. Please. I am pleading with you. Um, someone wrote in a criticism, making fun of elders, is this what passes as comedy now? Elders? <laughs> How old are you? <laughs> also, someone wrote in corrections. This isn't a comment in corrections. So, the writers are still on strike? Rude. <laughs> we joked you could lure Trump into a pan, into a van, into a pan. Ugh. <laughs> Maybe they didn't notice. We joked you could lure Trump into a van with a puppy. Many of you correctly pointed out that Trump hates dogs so much. That wouldn't work unless you said, like, hey, kid, you want to see us with this poodle? <laughs> I, w I would like to see that. I'm a little kid. I'd love to see that. Ken Chesbro, he, he uh, said I'm guilty this week. Said it in a courtroom. <laughs> and uh, it, we, because of Ken Chesbro's name, uh, uh, we said, we made a run of jokes about uh, cheese based Hasbro toys. One of them was Barbie. Barbie is Mattel. I got her confused with that other doll, Oppenheimer. <laughs> My Little Pony is Hasbro, which was the other one. Um, I made a joke of My Little Provolone. Killed. <laughs> One of you wrote, that joke doesn't work because the E in provolone is silent. You know what else is silent? The audience, the day I let you write my punchlines. <laughs> I just want to stress, in case you like that, this isn't going to become a, a sort of cheese pun place. That was that. That's over. Because I could tell that was bouncing around the internet like, hey, whoa. I thought he just did political jokes, but there's some good, good cheese puns. Uh, we said Trump's lumpy coat looks like a guy trying to sneak a bunch of kids into an R-rated movie. A bunch he pointed out he wouldn't need to sneak them in because uh, they just have to be with a guardian so he could just bring them in. But that assumes that Trump wants to pay for their tickets. <laughs> uh, I said the plural of Pegasus was Pegasi. Pegasus is a proper name. And even if it wasn't, the plural would be Pegasuses. Pegasi would be if it was Roman, but it's Greek. Pegasus was created when it sprang from the neck of a Medusa after she was uh, beheaded by Perseus. That was unique to that uh, Medusa. It doesn't happen to every Medusa. <laughs> Have you tried the new uh, Medusa cheese, Shoemaker? <laughs> Gorgonzola. <laughs> uh, 
<laughs> Speaking of Shoemaker, went to his daughter's wedding this Saturday. Oh my God, what a night. Beautiful, uh, beautiful wedding. Beautiful bride. Here's the thing though. Uh, I've worked with Shoemaker for over 20 years. Everyone in my life uh, knows how close we are, uh, knows how important he is to me. There's not a person I know that wouldn't be able to tell you everything about Mike Shoemaker. I go to this wedding. I'm meeting his neighbors, uh, cousins, family friends. Every person there walks up to me and says, Seth Myers, what are you doing here? <laughs> to a person. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, Mike's the producer of my television show. And they're like, Mikey the shoe? <laughs> like not only do these people not know he's a TV producer, like they can't believe he has a TV. They're all like, a, a producer? We thought he cleaned swimming pools. And then I catch his eye across the room and he's giving me one of these. He's like. <laughs> and I walk over, I go, what? He goes, stop blowing up my spot. And I go, what are you talking about? Like, what, why do you not want these people to know what you do? He goes, it's none of their business. And I go, what do you tell them you are? And then he says to me, dead broke. You think they'd lend me money if they know what I do for a living? <laughs> and I'm like, but you have money. And he goes, ah, you can never have enough. And that's not at a wedding. <laughs> Main takeaway though, it was amazing. Uh, Catherine, his daughter, beautiful bride, um, married a wonderful guy, very funny comedian named Mike Antonucci. And I remember my wedding day and how much I wish I could live it over again. And I walked over to the groom and I put a hand on his shoulder because I wanted to tell him, don't let this day fly by. And I put my hand on his shoulder, he slaps it away <laughs> and he turns around and he goes, oh, Mikey the Nooch, don't like when you touch the merchandise. I'm like, oh, Hey, man. <laughs> a pumpkin is a pumpkin. A jack-o'-lantern is a carved pumpkin with a light in it. And a jackal-lantern is a pumpkin that criticizes trick-or-treater costumes <laughs> when they come to the front door. They're like, mm, actually, Harry Potter wouldn't wear New Balance. <laughs> uh, somebody wrote this. We've been talking about venom versus poison. Somebody wrote, venom usually isn't poisonous, so ingesting venom wouldn't kill you unless you had some sort of open wound in your digestive tract, so the venom got in your blood. Well, I thought that was assumed, but <laughs> if you want me to say that every time. I also talked about uh, the difference, I, I tried to differentiate between ingested and injected, and I, uh, I put the emphasis on this, the syllable they share. I was like, ingested means this. And then I went, injected means this. And that's not the way you do it. You stress the difference. It'd be like saying, oh, Jeff Daniels. I thought you meant Jeff Bridges. <laughs> I said doth is how people talk at Ren Fairs. It's a uh, duff. So the correct usage would be, doth the candle maker taketh visa? <laughs> All right. This really, I couldn't believe how many of you did this. Talked about Silence of the Lambs last week. Called Hannibal Lecter the villain. Way, way too many of you. <laughs> Said Buffalo Bill is the villain. Hannibal Lecter is the anti-hero. If you're not his lawyer, shut the f up about that. 
Somebody wrote, he only bit one person in that movie. Oh, well, in that case, I guess he can babysit my kids. <laughs> and look, I'm not defending Buffalo Bill. The man is unwell. He's so unwell, he has an actual well. That's a red flag. If you're ever at someone's house and they have an inside well, get out. I also, uh, I talked about uh, Hannibal Lecter's security guards and someone said, hey, it sounds like you, uh, his prison guards sound like your security guys, John and Jim. That would be my <laughs> dream. <laughs> if John and Jim were Hannibal Lecter's security guys, it would, I would run to work each Monday <laughs> to hear the stories from those two guys about being the prison guards for Hannibal Lecter. I would run to work. John, You're not gonna believe what happened this weekend, sir. Hannibal Lecter tricks us, gets out of his cuffs, bites Jim. I'm like, oh my God, is Jim okay? Jim's fine. Hannibal Lecter's teeth shattered. And he bites, I guess he bites a lot of people, but he never bit anybody like Jim before. Yeah, you don't, you don't wanna bite me. You don't wanna bite me. Can I tell you something, Seth? His drawings, this guy Lecter, his drawings are good. He's drawing, I mean, Agent Starling, she's been here one, two times. Looks like a picture of her. What's he doing with you? Is it charcoal? Graphite. It's a graphite pencil. I said a gavel banged on a podium. I corrected that to a gavel bangs on a lectern. And then I was told the gavel actually makes contact, which is what, uh, with what is called a sound block or a gavel plinth. Maybe, and I mean maybe, I'll say sound block, but I'm never saying gavel plinth in front of this crew. <laughs> if I said plinth, on this show, Kenny Coyle would pants me in the hallway. <laughs> Plinth. With this lot. Uh, I got pigeons and gulls mixed up last week. I know gulls are the ones that eat your food on the beach. Best version I've ever seen of that. Two summers ago, my son Axel has a bagel he is running down the beach. He is holding his bagel in the air like this. He is in such, he's so happy that he has a bagel. And he's running towards us. We have our towel set up. Biggest smile on his face. And a gull swoops down, takes the bagel out of his hand, and flies away. It looked like it was something in a circus. <laughs> People gasped, a lot of people saw it, people gasped. They would have applauded at, at what the gull had done, swooping down and, and grabbing a bagel out of a running child's hand. Uh, the only reason they didn't applaud is Axel was uh, sobbing. And I had to go over and be like, "You, I know you're upset, an amazing thing just happened. <laughs> you're sad about your bagel, but a great, a thing I will never forget happened. We also talked about uh, whether these beach birds are, are seagulls or, or herring gulls. Uh, so I described this one to an ornithologist, the one that uh, did that to Axel, is a bagel. <laughs> I'll wait. The chair declares this correction in recess, subject to the call of the chair. <laughs> I 
Oh. I almost forgot. We discussed whether Stevie Nicks wore scarves or shawls. Uh, we decided she wore shawls and she tied a scarves around her mic stand. Uh, the reason she doesn't wear scarves is interesting. I guess she has a condition where her cervical uh, spine lacks strength. And so it's not healthy to wrap anything around it. This whole area just sort of lacks a structural integrity. To put it in layman terms, Stevie's next week. <laughs> 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 